On this week's episode of Know Your CEO, we get to interact with Equity Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Dr. James Mwangi. Dr. Mwangi addresses a wide range of issues, including how the bank has remained resilient of the COVID-19 pandemic period, its entry into other African countries, Kenya's debt situation, and the lighter side of the prolific banker. Take a look. Ever want to know how a CEO sees his world? And here's how. Apart from running an organization and strategizing, their key role is to ensure there is money in the bank. Our CEO this week is Equity Group Managing Director and CEO, Dr. James Mwangi. Dr. Mwangi, thank you for creating time. Thank you for having me. Just to get straight into it, Dr. Mwangi, COVID-19 has really hit companies hard. Others have struggled with, with operations. Others have even shut down. But equity has opened more branches internationally. What has kept that light ablaze? It's true that uh, COVID-19 has had a devastating uh, effect uh, on the operating environment. And this has affected different companies uh, differently. As an aggregator, uh, uh, playing the role of intermediation, taking from those who have excess and giving those who have deficits, our, our responsibility has been heightened. Uh, to ensure that uh, we keep the rights of the economies uh, on. We ensure that all businesses survive. We approached uh, the, the COVID from two perspectives. One, one, one was to be very defensive, ensure the bank was strong enough. We then withdrew dividend uh, for 2019 and then didn't pay dividend for 2020. And that was an additional 20 billion shillings. Uh, in foregone. So we became a very, very strong bank uh, from ability to absorb shock. The essence of that was to ensure that we were able to support our 15 million customers. Looking back, we accommodated up to 45% of uh, our customers, uh, giving them moratoriums and payment breaks of up to three years to ensure that their businesses don't close. The second aspect uh, was looking at uh, the opportunities uh, in uh, the environment. As they say, never waste a good crisis. So we decided uh, the next uh, strategy would be to be offensive. And that is what you have referred to. That's when it uh, made us uh, take over quite a number of banks uh, during that period uh, on an opportunistic point because we had the strength and the capability to do it, to save other businesses. And lastly, was to ensure that we availed customers who needed to repurpose their businesses, to retool their business with the capital that could uh, allow them to do transformation. And I'm sure you know of the 106 Af uh, Kenyan businesses that we asked them to repurpose and produce PPEs. Those are some of the businesses have done well during this period. Dr. Mwangi, you have not, not, not once, but more times, many multiple times, said that Equity Bank is a bank of the people. Here in Kenya, you have ventured outside Kenya into Rwanda, I mean, into Congo. Dr. Mwangi, what motivated you to venture outside Kenya, and how has the customer base accepted Equity Bank outside Kenya? Maybe this will require somebody looking back. Um, I joined Equity when it was number uh, 66 out of 66 in Kenya, with only 2,000 customers. Today we have 15 million customers. We are the largest uh, bank in Eastern and Central Africa. And we felt that uh, we had made a huge difference in Kenya. So we felt that um, we should not restrict ourselves and fail uh, to support our neighbors. After all, our dream was an African dream. We are a systemic bank in Uganda. We are a systemic bank in Rwanda. We are a systemic uh, bank in, um, in DLC. And in all our top five uh, markets, including South Sudan, we're in the top five banks. Equity Bank, uh, Dr. Mwangi, are you looking to enter in into more international markets? 
beyond the seven countries that we have presence in the, me the medium term dream is to be in 13 countries uh, by 2025. But our focus in the medium term will be our home continent, Africa. What innovative products have you deployed to support businesses build effective operations, more so during this COVID-19 period? Our history is one of uh, innovations throughout. Uh, we transformed the banking, we disrupted banking, we democratized banking by removing barriers to uh, financial inclusion. We removed things like ledger fee, minimum balance, account opening balance, uh, bureaucracy of introductions. So when the moment of COVID came, we realized uh, the world has changed and we needed to be sure that uh, we made it easier for people. Today, 98% of all our banking transactions happen outside our premises. So it, it was that successful. I wish to say that uh, COVID acted as a tailwind uh, for adoption uh, of online banking, uh, particularly mobile banking. The second part of this interview is called Quickfire. We get to know Dr. James Mwangi a bit away from the office. <laughs> Maybe now we can loosen up. <laughs> Dr. James Mwangi, what do you do beyond office? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one um, is storytelling. Uh, I'm a good storyteller. <laughs> uh, the second one that I do is occasionally uh, going to enjoy nature. Uh, so you find me quite a lot uh, uh, in our lodges, uh, tracking uh, fauna and flora. And lastly, to keep healthy, is uh, spending time in the gym. Dr. Mwangi, please paint to us a brief picture of what a typical day like in your life is like, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep? Normally wake up at 3 o'clock. In the morning? In the morning. What do you do at that time? That is the time to reflect and uh, really do your personal assignment. The second one is 30 minutes in the gym. Uh, that is uh, 5.30 uh, to 6. And 6 dash to uh, uh, the shower, and off uh, at uh, 6.30, you're heading out, uh, and I'm normally in the bank, uh, latest at 7, latest at 7. Work uh, throughout the day, my majority of my time is uh, in meetings um, and conversations with my colleagues and partners. And then uh, at around uh, 6.30, when the traffic jam has eased, try to find my way home. And uh, normally, I'm at home at 7. Dr. Mwangi, it will be bad if I did not ask you about Kenya's debt. Do you see this as a crisis in the waiting? I don't need see it as a crisis. Uh, Kenya has a uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio of 69%. And uh, that seems to be the average of emerging markets. I look back and realize that over the last uh, 15 years, that's when we have accumulated our debt. But at the same uh, 15 years, I've been privileged to have been the chairman of Kenya Vision 2030. And I've seen where the investments have gone. Uh, those debts have gone into generating uh, power or energy, as we call it. Uh, those debts have gone to build our ports, uh, roads, railways, uh, our health infrastructure, our education infrastructure. So to a great extent, uh, those debts are like investments. And um, when I took over uh, the initiative during the technical team, Kenya was only a $10 billion economy. Today, Kenya is a $100 billion economy. We have grown 10 times. So essentially, you can correlate the debt. The question is, are we adequately using uh, the investments that we have made? What is that one thing that you have always kept constant in your conversations with your children? Um, I'm privileged to have uh, an easy relationship with my children. Um, two things we always talk about. The first one is our value systems. The only thing that can keep them safe uh, is the value systems that they choose to adopt. We talk a lot about purposeful life, uh, living a life with an essence money uh, follow uh, the curve of the diminishing uh, value. 
uh, money is as only as important as uh, paying the bills. Money beyond paying bills has very little value to you. It is in the bank account and helping uh, others who don't have money. That's the money they borrow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at it that way, when you look, uh, when I was growing up, my greatest desire was to eat meat and to, <laughs> it was, uh, and to drink tea with sugar. I have not drunk sugar for 30 years. I have not drunk tea with sugar for 30 years. Then you start wondering the real place of money. And lastly is the desire. I am glad and thank God for helping me to manage my greed, to know when it is enough. So it is not about quantity. It's uh, knowing when it is enough. What's your favorite destination? Uh, the f most favorite destination is Masai Mara. Masai Mara? Masai Mara <laughs> is my most favorite destination. When I want uh, uh, to unwind, I find chasing wildlife that you don't talk to. Yes. It gives me an opportunity uh, to really have a proper downtime. And I think I've been um, in my Saimara 129 times over the last uh, 25 years. You keep tabs of the times that you've visited yes. Masai Mara, and that's yes. 129 times. 129 times. I know um, at Kick Rock, I've stayed uh, in room 42. 48 times. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Mwangi, what is with you and numbers? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question, but uh, I thank God for giving me a photographic memory. Um, what I'm really, really best at is numbers. And I have a very powerful retrieval uh, mechanism, so I'll be able to pull numbers uh, on any subject that uh, is of interest. This is this is a challenge because yeah. a majority of youth are watching right now. Give me three sheng words. Wow, that I don't want to make uh, uh, myself look uh, stupid in front <laughs> of uh, my children. So allow me. <laughs> Let me uh, teach not you. to take the offer. <laughs> Let me teach you one. Yes, of course. Kanairo. Uh, That's Nairobi. Oh, Kanairo. Yes. Wow. Kanairo oh. is Nairobi. Wow. Mbogi. is Nairobi. Mbogi. 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 Mbogi is your squad, your gang, your friends. Mbogi. Maybe we should stop the lessons <laughs> there because then uh, that one I need then uh, to be done here every day. Because, uh, you know, we are nothing but our differences. The way I've been socialized, the way I've been exposed to yes. the being, have a different uh, 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 differences like, uh, to, to words. So I think that's a language that might be more difficult <laughs> than French. But now because you're into numbers, yeah. I'll give you a last one. Oh, yes. 50 bob is Chuani. Chuani? Yes. No, oh, Chuani would have a very different meaning to me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> interesting conversation. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. And you're able to oscillate both uh, worlds? Yes, comfortably. Comfortably. Born into both worlds. You're able to, uh, to anchor a conversation with James Mwangi where you talk, you speak uh, the layman's language. Comfortably. You speak the money language. Comfortably. You speak the business language. And then you can still dive to the Cheng language. Yes. Just like you, Aren't I you thank lucky? the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> As we wind up, Dr. James Mwangi, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs? Thank you very much. So uh, a great uh, question. And maybe I would say this is one area I would like to make a greater contribution and I would invite maybe conversation. So why I would really encourage uh, young people is to appreciate like the way they, uh, they had to study chemistry and biology. They have to study the language and vocabulary of business. They have to understand 
the principles upon which business um, work. The concept of profit must be fully understood. The concept of cost, business cost, must also be uh, understood. So once we understand these concepts, it becomes very easy to understand profit, uh, or to understand business. Business is both a science and an art. So the concept of science is what most people uh, miss. Uh, they take uh, the social aspect of business, they take the art, uh, art part of business, but the science of business is where all of us need to, do, to, be, to invest a little bit more, better, and that is about principles. Dr. James Wang, that was a wonderful conversation, enlightening by all standards. I'd like you to sign out for us. This is your camera. Just say, the conversation on Know Your CEO continues next Monday. The conversation, Know Your CEO, continue next Monday. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Dr. Mwangi. It's a wrap. <laughs>